Flash Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Johnson. And I'm your other host, Phil Maynard. Um, we had a, a good successful preview episode that we uh, released a month ahead of, or not really a month, it was more like a week and a half or two weeks before uh, the release of the actual pilot. Um, once the pilot uh, aired, our fan base for the podcast tripled and probably won't stop there for the next couple episodes. So welcome all the new speedsters who have joined us since our first episode and are joining us from here on out. Um, hello, future people. Um, but the pilot was great. Um, at least I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. I liked it better than the original, though. The 90s with... Uh, I'm going to forget the guy's name for the rest of my life. Do you remember the actor's nope. name? Okay, I figured that. Just thought I'd ask. Um, no, but it's, everything's going off right now pretty good. Uh, um, the show seems like it's picking up. Like, the show, the big crossover event's going to be coming up in a couple months. And new leaked photos, spoiler alert for the next three seconds, of Professor Zoom. That's coming also. Uh, if you pay attention to the Facebook page, we've already posted a picture of it. And I have hopeful th wishing of what could be coming with it. Um, for the new cro for the crossover episode, that's where Arrow and Flash are in the same episode, right? For both days, the the Flash Day and the Arrow Day are both going to have, are going to be intertwining episodes. Okay. Um, so they'll both be in both of them. Okay, so do they have the villain yet for that one? Uh, it's not released yet, I believe. I think I might know who the villain is. Who do you think? I cannot remember the guy's name but the monkey. Groot? Yeah. Or Grod. Grod. Um... I mean, it shows it in Gorilla the, Grodd, yeah. It shows it, and nothing's said from there, so it may be an Easter egg for that. Possibly, because there was no actual, like... Because if there was a villain known on set, people would be all over it. Mm -hmm. But with me assuming that Grodd's going to be mainly CGI, it'd be understandable that no one saw a picture of him. And I can see both of them taking on him yeah. at the same time. I gotta show you uh, a couple set photos because it actually has Arrow and Flash in a fight, and I think Arrow wins, but I'm not positive. But then again, Flash has super speed, so it could have just happened in a matter of a second, and Arrow didn't even notice. Just go to an oil refinery. <laughs> He'll just be sliding all over, and Arrow will just be like, "Okay, Arrow, shoot, shoot." You saw the trailer, right? That they released for the Flash like months ago, where. It was arrow shooting, uh, arrow shooting a target at a tree, and Flash just comes out of nowhere and catches it. Mm -hmm. That was cool. So, I, I doubt an arrow can hit him because he can always catch it. Um, we didn't get any emails, but we did have two posts on the Facebook page that we are going to um, talk over uh, instead today. Uh, first one we have is from Mel Jones. And Mel Jones says, Not sure I like the episode last night. I found a dialogue. Yeah, I found a dialogue to be a little bit trite and corny. Barry Allen was a lot more like Christopher Reeves, Clark Kent than Barry Allen. The series has the potential to be like a Smallville freak of the week. Of the week sort of deal. Which we seen before. Oliver's appearance seemed a little bit more gratuitous. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still asleep. Than necessary for the plot, and the villains' motivations could seem awkward if you don't know the story. The series does have potential, and we can have the rest of the se the season to see if it improves. But I think I will trust it to improve, given the writers of Arrow involved. So, I thought the very first episode for The Flash was actually pretty good. I mean, when I started the uh, Sword uh, Shield, oh, the podcast was Sword. Yeah, when I started the Sword podcast, uh, Phil made me watch all the episodes of Shield. Spoiler alert: Eric hates Marvel. Well, 
Even <laughs> though, like, I still... The first episode of S.H.I.E.L.D. I really did not enjoy, but opposed to the Flash, but... I think it's can uh, has a lot more potential. And the whole Freak of the Week scenario, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. everyone thought was going to be a Freak of the Week also, because the first episode had someone with powers, so they thought, so the fan base thought, oh, every week they're going to have to go figure out who the new villain is, figure out what's going on, stop them. And uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was not that at all. Like, we rarely had powers in that show. There was a power every maybe five episodes, which was very rare. What would... Did Arrow have a power in the very first episode? Um, Actually, I don't no. think... I don't think there are any powers in that show yet. Uh, no, they're they're trying not to have powers, even though the Atom is now in the show, but he isn't the Atom yet. Uh, Dude, you need to catch up with Arrow. <laughs> Seriously. I'm sorry. I'm busy. Okay, after we're doing done doing this and you're just playing your game, put the episodes on, okay? I gotta sit down and concentrate. No, you don't. Just catch up. Seriously, you missed only one of the new episodes. And it was such a good episode. But um, they didn't even start bringing in real villains till uh, I think, the third episode of Arrow, no. which was Deadshot. Floyd, no. Floyd Martin wasn't brought in till, uh the third episode. The first episode was him getting off the island, fighting Mark uh, Mark Hunt, I think was his name. Um, I think that's his name, right? I'm not too sure. It's been a while. Um, when didn't they bring in Deathstroke? They brought him in on episode five, but that was only on the island, and that wasn't actually Slade. That was Billy Wintergreen. I'm a nerd, everyone, FYI, and I've seen this show way too many times. <laughs> So you just did. Shut up. <laughs> I'm going to aim it at your face next time. Uh, I'm making you straighter. Shut up. <laughs> no, but um, Arrow, they didn't bring in that many villains for a while. But with the whole meta-human stuff going on, it it won't be that long till we get actual powers coming to the show. Um, yeah, technically this is an all-superpower... TV show. So it would be kind of pointless if you just fought bank robbers every single episode and not some with powers. Yeah. Arrow, I could see them not using powers. Fighting a bank robber every episode. I could see that. Like, Clock King. Like, yeah. he was a good... He was good villain because he was barely there. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um, we got another uh, post on the Facebook page by uh, Christian Luke... I'm going to pronounce this wrong, and I apologize. Akfali, I believe? Akfili? Ak Akfili? I'm sorry. Uh, let us know the correct pronunciation if you want to post any more, and then we'll make sure to read it correctly. Since the Flash shows focus more on metahuman powers unlike Arrow, with the whole crossover idea with other shows, is there a chance Barry might meet his th Earth-3 counterpart, Johnny Quick, sometime in the later seasons? Come on, guys, that idea would be awesome. I'd love to hear any inputs from you guys as well. I believe that right now, at this point, if a super villain or hero has the power of super speed in the Mar in uh, DC Comics, they're going to show up in the show. Th for multiple reasons, mainly to save money, because it'll it save money on editing if they don't need to slow down the background if the only two people fighting is someone with super speed and another person with super speed. If they have someone who has super speed and someone who doesn't, it can cost them a lot of money to have to like throw everything in the background into slow motion while the other person's moving constantly, which the 90s show did um, m mediocre on. Which... Yeah, but I think if they put so many speedsters in the show, it's going to become overkill to the point where it's not going to be one to watch. Kind of to the point of like Iron Man. Yeah. The Iron Man series. Iron Man had a suit in the first movie. Iron Man Iron Monger also had a suit. In the second movie, Iron Man had his suit. War Machine had a suit. Um Just <laughs> Justin Hammer was trying to build the suits which um Whiplash actually succeeded in, and then Whiplash also had an Iron Man suit. In the third one, he has over forty different Iron Man suits. It's not and once you make it to the point where there's over so many, it's hard to take serious. So It's kind of just like the running joke. What's going to happen this one? Oh, another suit. Another suit. Another suit. Oh, oh. look, another speedster. Another speedster. Another speedster. It's just, it'll get to the point where there's so many 
super powered people with super speed that it's just common and not fun. Yeah, but it would be cool to have more speedsters, but not to the point where it gets overkill. Like maybe once one speedster every new season. Maybe yeah. Like first season will probably be Professor Zoom. We'll get or Reverse Flash, whatever they're gonna call him in this show. Um, I could see them calling him Professor Zoom because yeah. that's a stupid name. And since we know that Cisco's the one who's probably gonna be coming up with all the names for the villains, um, that's probably what's gonna be coming. Have they introduced a Wally West at all? No, they have introduced his aunt though, Iris West, in the show. Okay, because a Wally West in the show would be pretty cool. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good first speedster. Uh, they haven't. They're probably not going to introduce him till. Well, I, I'd say season two, but Arrow they on episode fifteen just said here's Roy Harper. Actually, not episode fifteen. That was episode ten. Dodger. Uh, they're just like here's Roy Harper. Here's his sidekick. One day they'll meet up again and be him best friends. And that was first season. Season three. Now they're best friends and stuff. Yeah, and that would be pretty cool because Dick Grayson and Wally West are best friends. And we know that Dick Grayson's coming with uh, the new show Titans. Yeah, but I don't think they'll uh, ever TNT. cross over that way. There is a chance that I heard a rumor, it, wild rumor possibly, that the Arrow writers might have a little bit involvement on this show. Yeah. Meaning there could be a chance that the shows are connected but be, still. Yeah, because Bloodhaven's referenced quite a bit in the first season of Arrow. Yeah, and second season. It It's just pretty much like... There's uh, Starling City, and then Bloodhaven's, like, right next to it, it sounds like. Yeah. And, oh, because, yeah, because they found Floyd in Bloodhaven in one of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So, it has to be right next to Starling City, which means, why haven't we heard a little bit of a flying, like, bird at night or whatever? Yeah. yeah. As I look over at the fridge and see the giant Nightwing sticker. Mm hmm And look at your TV and see the Nightwing comic. Yeah. Hey guys, guess what? Eric's a Nightwing fan, if you haven't realized this. We have posters everywhere. <laughs> and just, yeah. Um, so, what we're going to be doing is we're going to, uh, for those of you who, this is your first episode watching or listening to us, what we do is we do a commentary on it where we play the episode on mute with subtitles. Let me actually turn the subtitles on or else we're going to be screwed here in a second when it's on mute. Um... We're going to have the show playing with subtitles, and we'll read the show, or we'll read it to ourselves, and we'll commentate on the show as it's going on. Unlike the first episode we had, where is their sound? Yeah. Now, I, uh, I bought the season pass for the Flash uh, TV show, so every time a new episode uploads, we'll be able to get the show with closed captions, instead of getting a file that we can't have closed captions on. Um, that made it difficult for a while. Yeah, and that's why I decided to throw the money into this because I knew this is something that I'm really passionate about is doing this podcast and getting it out for all of you guys. So we'll tell you when we start. Uh, we don't have commercials, so if you guys are listening to it on... Um, TV. On TV, yeah, uh, for recording, DVR, um, then you guys are probably going to be a little lost with uh, what we say if you guys don't pause us during your commercial breaks. Um, we will spoil. I think we already have already in this episode that we spoiled. Rob. Well, yeah. Um, so other than so we do spoil. So watch the pilot first, or watch every episode before you listen to us. That way we don't spoil anything, unless you're using us using listening to us as a point of okay, we can, um, this is how I'm going to catch up on the show without having to watch it. I'm like, unless you're Phil and just look up everything before you watch the TV show. What do you mean? You do that for movies. You're like, oh, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And you go and you go, yep, 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 yep. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Great sound effects right there. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> uh, Phil waking up. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to press play right now. Uh, I'm placing play right now. And so uh, it's all starting off in the clouds. Is there a way you can like make it full screen? You mean like this? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we see the streets of 
Central, Central City. Yeah, I Central Starling. City. I was trying to say Starling, too. It's pretty much filmed in the same exact place. The only thing that's different is day. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think yeah, if you, they showed if you pay, a lot of this before. If you pay a lot of close attention to the backgrounds, you'll notice a lot of the same stuff as Arrow. So we just went to a flashback of 14 years ago, and of course, there is a is... bunch of red everywhere. Are we going to play the red game again? Are you seriously going to do this? Red coffee cup. <laughs> so red, his mom, red jacket. Yeah. So his mom's asking why red hair. you got in a fight. Actually, that's not red. <laughs> okay, it's not Barbara red. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, his dad comes home. Interesting thing about the dad is the dad was the original actor for The Flash in the 1990s. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that actually is. I like this show because it's a passing of the torch sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, interesting thing coming up right here. Uh, Barry wakes up in the middle of the night and water is floating outside of his fishbowl. I still don't understand that fully of how that's happening. I I want to get a little bit more into detail of how that could be happening. Uh, so Barry goes to his living room and sees his mom tr stuck in this, like, swirling yellow and red vortex. Which, the red may be the Flash, and the yellow may be the... Well, Professor Zoom. Yeah, maybe Professor Zoom, but everyone else is saying that it could just be his entire costume. Well, I think, originally I thought it was just Professor Zoom. I thought it was just Zoom because of how he sees Zoom's face in, in a later shot. Yeah, Um somehow... Barry just got teleported. That's how I feel the season finale of the show is going to be, is the is uh, that fight, and we actually see them go back in time, fight in that situation, and the mom dies that way. That's possible. Don't you think? Okay, so now we're seeing uh, Barry running to a police scene because he's always late. That's the ongoing joke, in, even in the comics, about um, Barry, <laughs> is that he's always late to everything. Yeah, that makes sense. But anyways, he's a forensic analysis, I believe. CSI. Yeah. Um, crime scene investigator, if you did not know, buddy. Yes, I know what CSI stands for. Okay, I just wanted to prove that I did. <laughs> Alright, so his captain's not too happy. That he was late. <laughs> and um, it's not his partner, but it's kind of like his adopted dad in it a was, way. His da that is his adopted father, pretty much. Yeah, since and, his real dad uh, got thrown in prison. Because he's framed for oh, killing Oh, right mom. here. They cut this out of the TV show, I noticed when I saw it. Is um, when uh, detect or an Officer West or Detective West says, uh, did you get the thing I, w I was looking for? Barry just says in the show, yes. In this, he can't hands him a ha uh, candy bar as like that was what he was asking for. Right. This, I'm very interested in seeing more of. Oh, how he kind of does, like, a Sherlock Holmes type thing? I see it more so as detective vision from the Arkham games. Yeah, that's Don't you, true. You see? Yeah. Um, and then they're just like, wow, it, he this kid is genius. And he's 27, I believe. For the 14-year flashback. Wait. When I was 11... 25. Because he says when he's... He keeps saying, when I was 11, my mom was murdered. And... If that was 14 years ago now, that makes him 25 if, I, if I'm if i actually good at math. right? Are you good at math? No, but I'm going to hope. <laughs> anyway, so now they're at the Central City Police Station. And uh, I hate it when you go away because then the pressure's on me. So Barry's doing his research and is trying... Oh, here's Iris. Okay, so Iris walks into uh, Barry working on uh, forensic stuff uh, for the... Uh, Martin case, the Martin case. Oh, there's Big Belly Burger. Yep, which is very popular in Arrow series. Th did they say Big Belly? Because I just I just noticed it off of the. Uh, I don't know if they said it, but you noticed the logo. I noticed the logo. Nice, you're getting good at this stuff. Yeah, I even noticed in the Nightwing comics they have references to Big Belly Burger. Well, uh, the two big things. It's uh, like McDonald's. Big Belly is the McDonald's of DC, and Jitters is the Starbucks. Uh, Jitters is where uh, she works. Yeah, I can see that. So you have to drink a lot of caffeine to get Jitters? Yeah, that's that's the uh, coffee industry. Oh, so now he's talking about uh, the uh, particle accelerator. Um, oh, and he's saying that once it's created, 
they can learn so much more about the physics and everything we'll learn so much more about how like the world is and what's going to happen sort of way um oh there's Iris is dead and his analysis is complete of the piece of like mud dirt that he found at the it wasn't mud or dirt it It was was feces it was manure (laughs) so but yeah now he's locating it to three farms that use a specific type of I believe it's um like uh, it's vitamin for, or something. Yeah, it's a yeah to feed the uh, the cows. Yeah, and so it's an old one. So not everyone uses it. So Barry and Iris are like all giddy, heading over to Star Labs to see the particle accelerator turn on. To, oh, I like that. I like. I didn't catch that before. Tomorrow begins tonight. Um, That's the slogan for this. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So anyways, now there, there's a whole bunch of protesters. I don't know why they're protesting science. I mean, all those people are probably going to get superpowers because of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, there's a reason behind it. It's dangerous to do it. it because the sci- The reason they're protesting it is because they, the people that are protesting are like, something bad is going to happen if you do this. We don't know what, but something will. And, hey, guess who was right? <laughs> the protesters. <laughs> Yeah, but then Barry wouldn't get superpowers. Yeah, and neither would all his villains. <laughs> but then there would be no show. True, shut up. <laughs> so, anyways. Yeah, they're standing in a line for the... Uh, just to see the park looks there, the new thing. Yeah. Going in. Uh. There, there, it's not really a line, it's more of just a big crowd for, to hear the... Uh, oh, is that actually... Uh... Oh, I couldn't catch if it's her or not. Uh, to his right, if it's uh, what's her name? Caitlin Snow. Um, yeah. Hmm. Anyways, who's this guy? The this is Harrison Wells. Um, he and another idea I have are who I believe Professor Zoom could be. That would be not until up. Oh. Her Iris's laptop just got stolen. And so Barry, the superhero he is, without the powers yet, runs through the crowd and... Trying to chase a guy who knows parkour. Which is something really hard for a normal person. Yeah. So... I wouldn't know. He's probably not going to win this one. Well, he's almost caught up and gets smacked right in the face by the laptop. (laughs) Is the laptop even usable now? Uh, Because my laptop dropped a foot and it became unusable. Possibly. It can. So now this guy just wasted a laptop by hitting Barry in the face. Yep, there's parkour. Yeah, I could do that easily. And then police. Yeah. So. Oh, are you fast? You want to see the hard way if you're faster than a bullet? And that's a thing because the Flash is faster than a bullet. So is Superman. Well, so is Eddie if he turns out to be uh Professor Zoom. Yeah, but if they do make them, they would not. That would be a season finale thing, kind of like the Malcolm Merlin. Yeah. Well, you knew that Merlin was. Uh, you knew that Merlin was the Dark Archer from episode uh, thirteen. Uh, uh, season one. I don't know how many season episodes were. Oh, now they're at the farm. They're at the farm, and uh, I do not know this guy's name. Did you catch it? No, but he's uh, um, important right now. <laughs> well, after this. Yeah. Uh, so, a storm's going on. Uh, if any of you know Flash history, the storm is actually important. And if you've seen Arrow... You've seen this scene already. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're going to start... The park looks like starting soon, and Barry just... I think he's now done with his nosebleed. Yeah, like, it finally cleared up. Because as he came in, he's like, oh, it's good now, and then throws it away. So, is this... So he pulls up a map of the city. Oh, he's trying to, like, it's... He's trying to get, uh... Information about who killed his mom. Yeah, because he won't take... He won't take it that his dad's the one that killed his mom. He won't believe that. Yeah. So, uh... Um, Which I believe, because it's kind of like a reference to Flashpoint. So... Oh, yeah, the season one finale is probably going to be Flashpoint, which is going to change everything, and we'll be able to see so much stuff. That's going to be really confusing oh, still yeah. for a lot of people who don't have never seen Flashpoint. That's the thing. This show, I have a feeling they're going to be able to describe it to people. So they'll like they'll they'll tell it in a way that people will be able to understand. Yeah, but I, 
hope. Run the move. There's gonna be either a lot of references or a lot of people actually seeing this villain or superheroes. That was actually the most amount of blood you actually see in this show. <laughs> Is it just gushes out of the guy's neck as he gets hit? Um, but Martin jumped into an airplane to escape uh, the police. And I believe it's his brother flying it. Am I correct? Because I, they're saying it's the Martin brothers. I don't know who they never say, they never say. So I just assume. Anyways, so a lightning storm is now going on, and Kyle shuts off to. Oh nope, never mind. The parka looks like it just exploded. Yeah, so, I like the whole you see the reflection of it exploding in his eyes, sort of thing. So just make it look more realistic. Yeah. So. And then the plane's going up, and, and boom, it is destroyed. It just gets disintegrated in the air, pretty much. I don't know how he even survived that to begin with. Yeah, that's my thing. Maybe a cloud, possibly. He created a cloud as it was falling, sort of thing. So, so now they're back to the reference with the liquids floating up, which I think is maybe time slowing down, something to do with gravity. I originally thought maybe there was a chance that he already had the power like a split second before the lightning crashed and that like the echo of the thunder coming or the echo of the lightning coming down is what raised the liquid up sort of thing does that make sense yeah or, or maybe it's sounding stupid or maybe it's a way to like show people like like a spider sense like right when that happened with the fish tank when he was a kid the speedsters were cool in new the logo room. right yeah sorry the speedsters were in the room and the liquid floated up again, and he was, became the Flash. So I wonder if they do it again. <laughs> uh, so nine months later, he's been in a coma, which nine months ago is when that happened in the uh, Arrow show. And, and there's, now, what, the Killer Frost and who? Vibe. Vibe. Well, I don't know if our fans know that yet. Uh, just rewind and pretend we said spoiler alert, okay? Um, but... Um, yeah, he wakes up, and he's basically completely unharmed. Like, nothing ever happened. Like, yeah, as if, like, it, what it did was just, like, make it so that he's now at the epitome of um, Oliver Queen. That's what his... Yeah, basically, he just got, like, muscle. <laughs> yeah, because uh, <laughs> this is really weird for him right now. <laughs> yeah, especially when a girl asks him to pee in a cup. Yeah, just as he's waking up. You were struck by lightning, and then looks in the mirror... And that's my favorite line in this. Lightning gave me abs? How the hell did that happen? <laughs> but what it's doing is it's healing him. It, Basically, yeah. It's constantly giving him heal, so it's making the, um, the epitome. A um, comic for this, uh, for the Flash oh, show. there he is. Harrison Wells is in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, in a comic, they made a joke about how Barry looks good, but he's not strong and wants to borrow uh, Oliver's salmon ladder. You know, in the show. Oh, yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just see him do it, like, repeatedly over. <laughs> that would be... Oh, there's the... Grodd. Grodd. Yeah. <laughs> Big reference right there for any of you who know who uh, Grodd is in the comics. Super intelligent gorilla Grodd. Um, Which... If you want to know more about him and don't want to look up uh, it on Google, go watch the movie Planet of the Apes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but that could be a season two... If uh, if it isn't the crossover, yeah, because they could go to the city or uh, Monkey City, where I don't know what it's called, but in Africa, in, Gorilla City. Is that actually a yeah. thing in DC? Yeah, oh. uh, in Nightwing comics, Blockbuster had to get a new heart, so they went to Gorilla City to steal a Monkey's heart. Oh, cool, uh, dude. They live in America. I doubt they'll go there to deal with this part, and I don't think Rod's gonna go that Canada. far. Canada. Well, okay, this is filmed in Central City. I don't know what actual state they can it's in. They can just go to, like... But all this is taking place in um, America, okay? Like, but it's filmed in Vancouver. They can just go to, like, Utah, and then, bam, there's Africa. True. What they'll do, though, is just stick to Vancouver, just find a, like, drier area, and just call it that. Anyways... I'm just I I just so happy that Danielle Panabaker's in a show. I I loved her as an act. I love her as an actress, and glad to see her actually doing TV. Um, yeah. uh, uh, sorry, I'm just. I'm talking. not a. I'm not He's an not an actor, actor person. I'm an actor person. He's all about DC Comics, and I'm here to talk about the show. <laughs> um, 
So jitters. I like the logo too. I didn't even see the logo. You'll see it in a second. It's it's pretty funny. It's a, uh, it's a J and a D. Uh, with the, isn't that cool? That is funny. Uh, so Barry is walking into jitters. Oh look, right there, Iris, right what? behind. The, it, how did they plan that? I think it was a coincidence. The, okay, that is just some great coincidence right there. That uh, see, that's what we're here for—to let you guys see what's in the background. Um, so he walks into uh, jitters, and he's just looks like he's jittering. Yeah, <laughs> he's just so happy to see her after nine months. And but... he's in love with her, as we all know. Yeah. Um, and he's proving that his heart's beating. And, but she's saying oh, that's really. Oh. This is actually from the comics. I found out. Oh, this nice. scene right here, he goes to a restaurant and someone trips, and this is like in the first issue that all the food starts flying off the tray, and he's like, "What's going on? Yeah, <laughs> no one so, else has seen this." Yeah, so the slow motion was pretty cool. But I like the slow motion aspect to the show. Yeah, they have they don't do much in this episode. They yeah, there isn't much slow motion to the episode. Oh, so we hear so now we see uh, Clyde Martin. Uh, walk into a bank and hand up a uh, deposit slip saying this is a robbery and just creates a giant cloud inside uh, the bank which how is this going to hurt is my main question uh, a bunch of glass falls down well yeah so Barry goes back to the police station and everyone's just happy to see him yeah for the most part <laughs> there's always that one cop that makes a joke <laughs> yeah it's like oh too bad you didn't die no that's not what he said <laughs> it's more so like lightning struck you and you still look like a child yeah that's what he said so anyways they're responding to a 515 which i think is probably i guess the bank robbery yeah it's a robbery on the east side uh and up oh, that's his new partner because the other detective died when he got shot in the neck on the uh at the um the farm yeah so, um, now, this guy, Eddie, uh, Eddie Thane, or Thwain, in this show, in the comics, um, in the comics, uh, the actor that they believe he's playing is Eobod Thwain, which is Professor Zoom. Oh, so, a criminal is getting arrested and starts to grab for one of the police officers' gun, but Barry stops it somehow he doesn't even know how he does it yeah but he went so fast that no one saw it just looked like a gust of wind just blew all the papers away so and so he walks outside and his hand is like shaking intensely it's on meth it's on meth <laughs> and now he can't control his speed right now he's kind of on like an adrenaline rush sort of thing yeah and he runs into a car and cop car and shatters the window and of course no blood that, yeah. that should have had blood on that one. Ooh, ooh, Easter egg coming up here in a second, guys. He's like, okay, now he's seeing that he can run fast, so he's testing it and just runs down the alleyway. And he's running as fast as possible. Well, not really as fast as possible. Oh, true. He's just running. Takes a quick turn and slams into a uh, laundry truck. Now, with the laundry truck, the name on the side of it, I don't remember. I think it's uh, Gamby. Gamby is the person in the comics who makes all the Flash's villains costumes. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, reference Ferris Air. Again, another reference right here. Yeah. Um, Eric, that's, tell me who uh, Ferris Air is. Isn't that a Green Lantern? That's the company he works for as a test pilot, yes. Yeah. And then the uh, sexy test suits that he comes out of. In a red test suit. It's red, everyone. It's We're red. playing the red game again. <laughs> There's literally just so much red, it's overkill. Dude, how many times do you watch Arrow and say, green, 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 there green, There really is green. not that much green in yes, Arrow. Yes, there is. Not really. Not as much as this. This is just this like is a This is a colorful slap. show, remember? No, this is like a slap in your face. Like, we're going to make everything red and there's I, nothing to do about I it. I like Cisco. I find that he's hilarious and, like, he's the comedic relief to the show, pretty much. But Barry's supposed to be the comedic relief. I know. That's that's the funny thing. We got Cisco's pretty much Felicity of the group, and... Yeah, they're well, there's be... no diggle. Yeah. <laughs> there's no diggle on the show. Not yet, at least. Well, well we his... Firestorm is coming. I his hear. stepdad can be. Wait, Firestorm. Fire. Do you that know who was Firestorm Felicity's is? husband, I believe. In the comics, yes. Yeah. They changed it in the comics currently now. Uh, uh, 
Cause, this sucks. No, because they're making the real Felicity from Arrow into the comics now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're bringing her in as, like, like the badass hacker, like she is in the comics. So the she show. is basically another Oracle. Yeah. But no one could beat Oracle. So he's getting ready to get tested for a run, and Wells is saying, um, well, I want to see your full potential, I caution, restraint. I like that right there, the whole lightning in his eyes as he's right about to run, and then everyone flies backwards except for, like, uh, the guy in the Wells, wheelchair. who's just in the wheelchair, like, I'm cool, I have my glasses on. He knew it was going to happen. I'm telling you, he's Zoom. Uh, yeah, I could see that, because he has had, like, what, nine months of practice to actually get his powers down. Yeah, but that's the reason why I think he stays in the wheelchair. I'll, I'll discuss that at the end of the episode when we see that. And yeah, nice spoiler. What? Anyways... No, uh, <laughs> dude, I, we just said everyone watched the show. Okay, so now we're seeing a flashback again to Barry watching his mom get killed and the swirls of lightning. Right there, Zoom. Yeah, I could see, I know it's Zoom, but... You thought it was just uh, Flash, though. I know Flash is in there because he's chasing after Zoom. So, uh, Barry crashes. He's, yeah, I bet, this is what I bet, I bet Barry chases Zoom... And, into the past. And he's trying to save his mom, but he's probably the one that killed him. Killed him. Yeah, what if it's not even, he doesn't even know that they're going to the past. He's just chasing him, and Zoom tricks him to going around the world, going into going back past. in time. Yeah, hitting the speed force, and... Yeah. That was weird. It's the rupture of the speed bomb, is what I was trying to make, but it didn't seem that way. So, West and, um, and Eddie are talking about how the cameras were all destroyed, but there were a bunch of people with cell phones, and everyone, you know, is on that Twitter sphere nowadays. I still don't like Twitter. I know. No one, not many people that I know do. Hmm. That's an, what type of blanket is that he's covered in? It was an emergency blanket? I think so. So, it was a oh show. my god, I never even saw the bone break until right now, and now it's all, ugh, god. So... Barry Crash broke his wrist like it just destroyed and now it's all healed again in within three hours like it never happened yeah and he broke the helmet but he's all good yeah but saying that the reason he yeah. crashed is that he lost focus because he started thinking of his past and now he goes back to telling his life story to more people that he just met yeah so he's 25 yeah um, because, like, first time in Arrow, he's, like, just talking to Felicity. When I was 11, my mom died. First episode of this. When I was 11, my mom died. And this happened. It's just like, dude, we got it. Stop telling people. <laughs> inside the lightning. Oh, yeah. He saw a man inside the lightning. It was Zoom. He saw Zoom. So. It would be a good, interesting Flashpoint, but I still think it'd be confusing for a lot of people. Well, if you remember Flashpoint... Uh, Flash had to wear Zoom co Zoom's costume half the time because Zoom was messing with him and gave him his costume. So, what if the one in the yellow costume is... Okay, that's... Right Again, that will confuse many yeah. people. Okay, rephrase from what I just said. I'll talk to you about that later, though. Uh, so, Iris is at work right now, and Detective uh, Thwain, or Thane, I think it is. I don't know. Uh, Anyways. He's out there, and you see that Iris and him are dating. Yeah, that's not obvious. No, they're not dating, actually. Yeah, and guess who's there to see them kiss? Barry. And now he's like, I'm going to tell your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not too happy right now. He's actually more so in a sad mood, because he likes West. Um... Yeah, that's not a silence there. You kind of <laughs> stopped talking. I thought that you were going to pick up. Sorry. No. Okay. I want some Pringles. I'm going to eat Pringles after this. Um, so, Iris is saying, please don't tell my dad about me and Eddie. Um, and, and Barry's like, isn't that against the law for him to be dating you? And um, so Barry, like, sees a car coming at them at slow motion and, like, is Saves able to... Saves ours. Yeah. And sees Martin in the car and just runs after. Now, this scene right here, 
um, that bridge that you just saw. Yeah. Someone, uh, this scene was shot back in March. Uh, someone actually shot the whole car flipping on top of there, like a fan passerby saw it happening. And so that uh, it was cool when I finally, because I saw that video back in March. And when I finally saw this, I was like, oh, yeah, that was right then. That was something cool. And so instead of grabbing the gun from Martin's hand to... He grabs the wheel. He grabs the wheel. Like, the only... The most logical thing he could have done was grab the gun, disarm him, and then knock out uh, Martin by doing a, like, really fast punch. You know, I just say he just gets a knife and just runs by the tires and go poke, 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 and just flattens the tires. <laughs> that would save so much time. It would save so much time, yeah. Anyways. And so... Now, uh, some, how did the cars blow up? How did that happen? A Hollywood. Uh, oh, yeah, that's true. Because if you shoot a car's gas tank, it blows up. It does? Apparently so. <laughs> that's what Die Hard taught me. <laughs> yeah. And if you shoot a gas can, it blows up. I've actually tried that. What happened? The gas leaked out onto the ground, and I wasted ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so... West is saying, why did you bring her into this danger? That was not your call to make. So, she's basically saying, I can take care of myself. I'm an adult. I wanted to be a cop, but you wouldn't let me. He's like, you're damn right I didn't let you. <laughs> I don't want you in this stuff. But Barry, you're my adopted son. You're supposed to be in this mess. Yeah. That's kind of like a messed up thing right there, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> I'm not the only one noticing it, correct? <laughs> um, so... They never call him it in the show, but um, uh, Martin is actually the comic book villain, uh, Weather Wizard. Uh, yeah. I have a, a picture, I think. Yeah, I, I don't really know too I'll much show of you. Flash, com uh, Flash comics. But, yeah. So anyways... He's trying to explain to him that he saw... Yeah. Really stupid costume. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to explain to him that he saw the Martin, but and he doesn't believe him. And West is like, I don't believe you. You see crazy stuff all the time. Your dad killed your mom. Stop making up stories. Martin's dead. Your mom's dead. Everyone you care about is dead. Just deal with it. God. Soon to be ours. I know, right? <laughs> no. They're going to get married, and then they'll have a grandchild named... Um, Wally. No, no. Uh, Bart. Bart. Impulse. Uh, out of the only Flash characters I know of is Barry Allen and Wally West. There's Barry, Wally, and Bart. Yeah. Well, and Jay Garrick was the first one. Wally's right still here, the best. Right here, this is a funny joke that the suit made fun of, is that the bangs are in the exact same spot. Uh, with the whole... All all the artists did for the sketch artist was trace the draw, trace the picture they took. I just put a hat on them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Barry's saying, "I'm not the only one that was hit by the lightning or affected by the particle accelerator, was I?" Um, and Wells is saying, "When the particle accelerator went on, we were all happy. I had achieved my life goal for about 15 seconds, and for about 15 minutes." And then antimatter, dark energy. What was the other one? I wasn't paying attention. I was watching like, the video. So basically, they have a map of like where all the effective people are. And it covers pretty much uh, most of the city. <laughs> so they could actually have the freak of the week by doing this. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm hoping they don't. They already have another villain lined up for the next episode. But you need to remember one thing. Flash has as many villains as Spider-Man does. And, like, Spider-Man has so many different villains. Flash is the exact equivalent to that. I could see there being a freak of the week for the first season just so Barry can, like, develop his powers and understand. God, I hope it's not the first season. Maybe the first four episodes we okay. get a freak of the week. And then it starts devolving into, wow, this stuff's all connected. Yeah. So, yeah. And then, of course... Zoom comes in, or maybe Grodd. Zoom is after Grodd. Or, Zoom is after the crossover. If we're assuming right now that Grodd is the crossover episode. Yeah. Um, the thing about the villains, though, to Flash, that's different than Spider-Man's, is that not all of them are evil. Most of them are just out to make a dishonest buck. 
Like, that's what they are. None of them are... E not a lot of them are evil. They just do evil things, like, messing up. There's a joke where there's a... Like Deadpool. No, that's different. Deadpool's insane. No, that's he, an, he kills that, people. It's, a it's an entirely different point that I'm trying to make right now. Uh, flashback. flashback. Flashback right now. Um, to him going, seeing his mom dead and stuff. Um, basically they're taking, they assume that's his dad. And so they're taking his dad away. Cause his dad was the only one on scene when it happened. And since he was away, I, actually, you know what? I bet it, yeah. Cause flash took Barry. That's why he got teleported. And yeah, he's like, get out of here. He's like, you don't want to be here right now. Yeah. Okay. Like Barry. Wait, wouldn't that mess up the time paradox if Barry touched Barry? Like if No, he... no, this is not freaking Back to the Future. <laughs> Back to the Future is probably wrong in a lot of things. Um, so we see Barry running and running and running and running. And, and then a reference to Arrow, Starling City. Starling City, only five miles away. And the funny thing is, is that I believe Star uh, Starling City and Central City are 600 miles away from each other. Yeah, because you have to take a train, and here is he is a starting city, and there is Oliver uh, Queen. Yeah. Not even wearing a mask right now. Not even his eye paint. And judging by what just happened in the previous scene of this actual episode, he, he has his mask on and everything. Hmm. Dude, you need to catch up. Okay, oh my God. okay, <laughs> eventually. Anyways, I have to work tomorrow, so there's something to do. You don't work tomorrow? Oh, no, wait, tomorrow's Sunday. Yeah. We can watch it after this, dude. No, no. Why? Why because do you have I, such a problem with that? Because I actually want to sit down and pay attention. It's not like Yu-Gi-Oh! where I can zone it out and actually understand everything that's happening. Okay, fine. Let's watch a couple episodes instead of... Yu-Gi-Oh! Of no. <sighs> anyway, so they're up there. So Flash is saying, I don't think I can be a vigilante. We're talking over like one of the most critical parts of this episode. Where, all of, where Arrow is saying, you can be more than a vigilante. You can be a hero, a superhero. A, a guardian angel watching over your city and making a difference. Yeah, he's trying like to figure a flash. Out, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do. Oh, in a flash. I like that. And, like, if you see Barry's face right there, he's like, hmm, Flash. That's a cool name. Oh, yeah. No, Take your own advice. Wear a mask. <laughs> oh, and he puts it on. Yeah. He does it as, like, a thanks for it kind of thing because he never was able to thank him. Yeah, I like that. The whole which part? The wearing the mask? Yeah. Or? And then he lands in this, like, epic superhero stance on the wall. <laughs> like, that exchange is very stupid. I, I will admit that, like, Barry's saying that's so cool that he's able to swing off of an arrow. Barry, you can run at the speed of light. I don't think, I don't think he wins the cool contest here, right? Yeah. <laughs> and... But those two kind of do also feel a little bit responsible for causing the particle accelerator to malfunction. And it's affected to so many crimes happening in the city while he was asleep for nine months. Yeah. And Cisco's like, okay, if we're going to start doing this vigilante uh, justice force, we're going to need to do this right. And because of all their bad publicity, they tried to make a, a suit for uh, firefighters to try and help them. So Make it so that they could endure heat. Yeah. And try and get public opinion back on their side. Yeah, but... Uh, they never. I, why they never release it? I don't know. Project is still in testing phase, but that and they're still probably hated, so no one would want to even give them a shot. Sort yeah. Of thing. But the suit can withstand lots of heat and friction, which is why what? Barry's clothes and shoes are always destroyed. Yeah. And she's saying that there's a storm yeah, going on. Yeah, basically a pressure drop. So that's where the Martin guy is. I don't know his real name. Uh, Clyde Martin. Oh. With a D, not a T. So anyways, they're back at the farm. The same farm where it all happened. And let's see if he loses another partner. <laughs> sort of. He gets knocked out pretty bad. Okay, this, this is like one of my most favorite scenes. And West in his mind's like, oh crap, he is alive. Barry was telling the truth, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love this. I woke up the night I woke up from the storm and saw what the Star Labs did to me, and I woke up on the ground. I knew what I was. I am God. Yeah, that. <laughs> that was. I can understand Shut where. The uh, hell? I now, love that. I love that. What it was? He's like, 
Dude, you calm down right now, because that's about to be something bad. Yeah. And I mean, then... That's kind of like the only thing I thought was kind of like corny, was when he said, I am God. No, this you think your God, you think your guns can stop God? Why would God need to rob banks? The guy is good at delivering the lines, though. Yeah. Even if they are corny lines, he's doing such a great job yeah. at delivering I can see what Mel Jones is saying about this being a little bit corny. Yeah. So, but then again, a lot it, of stuff is kind of corny. They're trying, okay. While Arrow is dark, gritty, and, like, terrifying. It's basically a Batman without Batman. Yeah, that's what Arrow, Arrow is. Arrow is Batman, while this is Superman. Basically. Where it's trying to have a little bit more humor and comedic effort to it. Yeah, I, I, this is kind of like the whole Marvel Gardens of the Galaxy. They're trying to bring in, like, lesser-known people, in a way. But Flash is not really lesser-known. So Arrow is. Yeah. Yeah, no one knew who Green Arrow was pretty much before the show started. Like, like I know a lot of people knew, but he wasn't, like, on, like, everyone's mind. No, that's true. But Flash, like, you you think Justice League. Who do you think of the top five right there? You Batman, think? Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, right and there. Aquaman. Yeah, I, I'd say Aquaman beats Green Lantern because a lot of people are still... Like, I know Green Lantern had his own movie and Aquaman still hasn't yet. But to the point, to the public, Aquaman's still a little bit more famous than Green Lantern. Oh, you can't forget the Wonder Twins. We don't discuss the Wonder Twins. It's like Fight Club, man. You don't talk about it. <laughs> um... So the suit's holding up, but Barry's body isn't. And Barry's deciding to run around the tornado in the opposite way to try and cut it off. So, he's trying to figure out what's going on. Clyde's like, what's going on? And then notices lightning going around and then shoots a wall of uh, clap. Lightning. Pretty much, like, to the side and flash lamp slams into it and, like, it's thrown to the side. Basically, they just need a villain called Tripwire. <laughs> He just well, shoots tripwires out everywhere. Well, wait, wait till the point where uh, Barry can start going through objects. Yeah, but I can. Uh, that would actually be season two. I can see him start doing that. In the 1990s, he was able to do it. Yeah, in, like episode three. Yeah, but in the 90s, they weren't really too good at like delaying stuff. So Wells is coming in with the like inspirational speech, saying, "Now run, Barry, run." Let's like, take out Barry and put in Forrest. Run, Forrest, run. <laughs> That is cool. I, I never even, like, like really paid attention to the animation of him running sideways. Yeah. That was really cool. See, now, when you see him running, you see a mixture of red and yellow. Yeah. In his mother's scene, you see a separate red and a separate yellow. Yeah, you completely tell the difference. That's why I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. Yeah. So, so basically, him running around in a giant circle in the opposite direction is working. So, and Martin's being able to start stop lose this tornado, and it just basically takes just blew him down. Up. Yeah, and everyone's impressed. All, everyone, no, everyone's like, "Is he alive?" <laughs> because the mask went off, so they couldn't check his vitals to his uh, uh, pressure. Uh. That's why, and they can still hear, but they don't know what's going on. Um. Anyways, he's trying... Uh, so Clyde's right about to shoot him, and then uh, Clyde gets shot. And they're like, are you okay, Barry? Are you okay? Because they hear a gunshot, but they still can't check his vitals because the mask's off. And right now, he already screwed up on a secret identity. Yeah, first episode. Yeah, first, first episode, there's, what, five, six people that know that he's Flash. Who? You got... Okay, team doesn't count. Team, You can't think of the team as people that count right now. Because okay. they're the ones that gave him the power. You can't say that Wells... Okay, still, he team. knows. Yeah, that's now our, Wes knows. That's more than he the, needs. Yeah, he... The police not... Police knowing that you're a superhero, not the best help. <laughs> yeah, but if you do it during the day, you're a hero. But if you do it at night, you're a criminal. Just you're a vigilante. At, yeah, just look at Batman and Green Arrow. <laughs> and then look at Superman and Flash. Oh my gosh. How's, is Nightwing a hero or villain? Nightwing is, like, basically a villain in most Great. of the comics. <laughs> Actually, in the last and couple of comics, And West, West is saying to Barry, I believe your dad is innocent now. I believe now that you saw something in that lightning. 
but you cannot tell tell you cannot tell Iris of any of this. Mm-hmm. Which Barry needs to understand. Don't let people know who you are. Like this is his first day as a superhero, and you're already screwing up, bro. So they basically now he's at the prison and he's visiting his dad. Yeah, and um, <laughs> wow. Like, his dad looks so, like, I've done and seen things in prison, mm. sort of way. <laughs> I know what happens when you drop the soap. <laughs> Someone in my shell, in my stall dropped the soap. <laughs> and I had the wit. Not like, because I don't, I doubt his dad would take that sort of shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, he just picked the soap up. He's like, here, you drop this. <laughs> so, basically, his dad was like, did you get in another fight? And he's like, yeah, I did. Did but you th- win? Yeah, yep, I actually won. I this won. Time. Yeah, it's like a father and son. Like, did you? Did you? You were in a fight, right? Yeah. Did you win? Yeah. Yeah, that's my boy. So basically, he's telling his dad that he knows that he didn't kill his mom, and his dad just says that that's all. That's any- all he needs to keep going on in life is yeah. to know that his son believes him. Yeah. So basically, he's gonna say whoever or whatever killed his mom, he is going to find him, and he's going to. Basically, put him to justice. Bring him to justice. With 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 a league, with with a justice league. Well, they are <laughs> doing that Justice League movie. I wonder if they're gonna take this Flash. They're not. They may. If they do, they have to include Arrow, and they already said that this is not part of this timeline. This is not part of the same universe. It'd be kind of cool, like what they did with the Marvel and the Captain America. I mean. That's what I liked about the shields when they did that crossover type thing. Yeah. But then again, oh. it just still it wasn't that entertaining to me. And then the Bazinga. You see the Bazinga shirt? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah. Or did you just get a little bit more respect for the show even yeah. more? <laughs> but they just put the Flash logo on his suit. To make it actually look like it has use and isn't just generic. Yeah. The lightning bolts on the head doesn't help. Like that those don't count. I see that more than nope. on the Flash himself than his actual logo because they always look at his head. They never do like a full like body shot where you see his logo. It's always his little lane bolts on his head that I see. Um, <laughs> I just thought if this world interacts with it, if this is a world where they watch Big Bang Theory, they how many times in the show have they referenced the Flash? In Big Bang Theory. Yeah. And it, how did they just say that, oh, here we go, my name is Barry Allen, I'm the fastest man alive, sort of thing. So Which, it's basically doing the Starling City thing. Yeah, I feel that's how they're going to open every episode. And, um, oh, I like this. A friend gave me the idea for a new name, and I think it's going to catch on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then just runs away, and then we get the Flash logo. Yeah, I like With the, the older one better. It seems more sleeker. So now we see Wells uh, at... This is like the end of the episode now. Wells is in Star Labs and goes through a little fake wall. Did you notice the line go over him so it like measure It like was able to tell who it was when he went through? Yeah, and so now he's standing up out he's of He's standing up. He can stand. This is big. And he takes off his glasses so he can see. So basically... That lightning did... that The particle accelerator did nothing to him. Yeah. But he's saying it did so that everyone believes. Now, here's the interesting thing. Flash missing, vanishes, and crisis. Wayne Tech is referenced down there mm-hmm. with... Uh, this is in the future, FYI. Um, uh, 2024. And um, did you see that? Did you see the yellow lightning mm-hmm. collapse over him? That is why I believe this guy could be uh, Zoom. Yeah, so that would actually be a really good villain. I mean, they did, for Arrow, they did that uh, Archer versus Archer, so Now he has Speedster versus Speedster. So that would actually make sense. And if you remember, he fought Merlin in the show twice. He fought him in the Christmas episode. Oh yeah, where he lost. Yeah, Uh, that's what I'll feel they'll do with the Flash, too. Yeah, because Zoom He'll, already knows all his powers. Yeah, Zoom Flash already is, knows who he is. That's the thing. Yeah, Flash is like, um, wait, why is my hand through this wall? <laughs> and, and, and it's like I can like, do this. And Wells is just over here, like, 
<sighs> it's like teaching a monkey. It's like one day he's gonna he's he knows it, it, Wells knows Barry has this potential to do all this. So I you no, know, I wonder if uh, Wells is gonna try and befriend Barry and actually teach him, and then this is out without his costume. Yeah. So I figure once he puts on the yellow costume and he like runs by and sees the yellow streak, he's like, oh, this isn't good. Yeah. So I wonder if he'll try and mentor Barry in a way and kind of like accelerate the show to where he learns more of his powers. Maybe. Um, because the thing with Green Arrow is, first episode, he was already the epitome of who he was. Because he had he's already had five years of training. Yeah. They go to the island and he's getting trained, trained, trained and going through. Yeah. Like, For five years life. he's on that island. Yeah. And, and so... He's basically already up to speed on everything he can do. Barry's still learning, which I could see that being a good change. Like, you learning what you do. Superman had to do the same thing. Well, if you did you see, ever see the original Superman movie with Christopher Reeves? Did you ever see the first one they made? No, I really wanted to. It's really good. But let's see. I'm going to see if we can try and find it. Because it's really good, and I'll think you'll like it. It's bad animation. Like, 1990s Flash, sort of. But it was made so long ago that it actually is justifiable. But it's so good. Yeah, with Lefty Daddy's Flash, I mean, with the first episode, it was kind of just like a really, really long, slow movie. Yeah, it that's, really how, was, that's it, how it felt. It was kind of hard keeping my attention. I'm going to try and continue watching the series so I can know more about The Flash. Anthony's already seen it all. Like three times, probably? Probably not. I don't know. I got it for him for Christmas. I knew he would love that. I also got him a Flash sweat jacket sort of thing nice uh you know how i got you the nightwing shirt oh uh, yeah i did that for him for a flash jacket that he wears now nice um where it's starting to fade you can totally tell like mine yeah <laughs> um no but i think that's about it for us right now um oh uh, to join the dis- uh to join the discussion with everyone go to facebook.com slash group slash speed force podcast or you can email, or or to have your email read at the beginning of the podcast, email us at speedforcepodcast at gmail.com. For us here at Speed Force, I'm Eric. And I'm Phil. Ride the lightning, speedsters. Wish I'd never gone into my lab to experiment that night Before lightning flashed around me and time changed speed Now I gotta try to be so patient until calamity will strike Because when things change in an instant, it's almost fast enough for me And I'll be there before you know it I'll be gone before you see me Do you think you can imagine anything so lonely? And I know you'd really like me, but I never stick around Cause time keeps dragging on and on and on and on and on Hey, thanks for staying tuned after the music. Uh, Welcome to the Marvel Minute. I'm your host, Phil. Oh, and I'm Margaret. Yeah, she's going to be joining me for a couple weeks as the uh, Marvel Minute uh, co-host. Um, Just to give a little bit background on myself, I'm a sequential artist, so meaning I went to college to study comic books. That's it. Okay, that's, <laughs> that is a great story. Everyone is now on the edge of their seats waiting to hear. Well, I am a pretty awesome person. I now sure, live yeah. in a van down by the river. You, you live in a national park. Down by the river. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> you got me there. Um, so today, the topic is, um, uh, for the Marvel Minute, is the big Marvel news is that Iron Man 4 has been confirmed by Robert Downey Jr. himself. He went on Ellen this week and uh, confirmed that Iron Man 4 is a go, which everyone has been in wondering ever since Iron Man 3 came out if they were going to do an Iron Man 4 mainly because everyone loves Iron Man and that they need to fix all the wrongs they made in Iron Man 3 (laughs) with everything that they messed up oh Marvel or Margaret has not seen Iron Man 2 or 3 yet uh considering what you just said I probably consider myself very lucky (laughs) well no one likes the Iron Man series but they love like the only Iron Man movie that people like that, and when I say people, I mean general public. I personally loved Iron Man two and Iron Man three. 
I thought those were the best ones. But the general public feels that those two were just a rip on uh, a lot of stuff that they could have that they did wrong from the comics. Ah, okay. Um, uh, speaking of comics, if you'd like, I have a little bit of information about the background of Iron Man. Yeah, go ahead. Let the fans okay. know. Where, <laughs> uh, let them know where Iron Man comes from, from okay. the mystical mind of Stan Lee. So, basically, what happened? It was the 1960s. Stan Lee was coming up with characters, very interesting characters. And, you know, he's sitting around with a bunch of guys, and they're like, okay, it's the 1960s. What don't we like? We don't like war, and we're kind of against corporate America. And Stan Lee was like, let's make a warmonger corporate American. And they're like, no, Stan, you can't do that. They're not going to like that. And Stan Lee's all like... Buddy, I'm doing it. Watch me do it. And he shoves Tony Tart <laughs> down the throats of America. And they loved him. They also, you forgot to add into the part about whole first superhero that's an alcoholic. Ah, oh, that didn't come later. You're talking about, well, um, the whole drug addiction thing. That has to go with uh, corruption of the innocent. You couldn't show drinking. You couldn't show kissing. You couldn't show any of that back in the 1960s. That came later During on. the whole MacArthur era where they had to put a um, they had to put a stamp onto every single comic book saying that oh, what was it called? It's the ADA. I remember that's the name of it, but I don't remember what it stands for. Yeah. It's the ADA approval. I did a whole report on uh, superheroes and comics uh, pretty much for an essay. Stan Lee was the one who who said pretty much the same thing. No, Stan Lee, you can't do a comic book about drugs, even if it is Spider-Man. And Stan Lee was like, you can't tell me what to do. I invented the Hulk. I am Stan the Manly Excelsior. And then he jumped out the window and flew off. What you don't know is that an Iron Man suit was following him and just grabbed him, and that's what carried him away, because the topic is Iron Man. <laughs> Yay! Way to get back on topic. Yeah, look at that. Speaking of I have getting... such a harder time getting on topic when we're playing D&D. &D. <laughs> if you haven't known uh, already, we are incredible nerds. Oh, they know that from listening to the preview, from listening to what we recorded earlier for Flash. How I was quoting what episode characters appeared in on Arrow. <laughs> but uh, Flash or Roy appeared on episode uh, ten, and Deathstroke came in on episode five. Okay, going back to the movies. Another big thing with Iron Man was I... the Marvel movie series. Uh, well, to go back to it, usually comic book, uh, when movies would ma be made of comic books, um, they try to make a comic book movie, a superhero movie. And most comic book fans were like, no, no, this isn't right. You're ruining my characters. And so Marvel got tired of that and said, you know, we're tired, Hollywood. Stop messing with our characters. So Marvel opened up their own film industry back in about 2007 is when it started. <sighs> I'm so old. And the first movie that they decided to release was a B-list Marvel character, Iron Man. Back in 2008, his movie finally came out. Um, he, when, was his, when did his comic originally start? Do you know? Uh, 1963, I think. 45 years later. Um, but you so, also got to consider about who the character is and what was going on at the time. We what do you have, mean? Well, okay. Well, Iron real Man quick, was, if I can say one thing, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, something that they did do differently from the comics to the movie is in the comics, they don't go into this in the movies. Iron Man is a drunk. He, uh, his main thing is when he isn't in the Iron Man suit, he's drinking. Um, hell, half the time when he is in the Iron Man suit, he's well, drinking. Well, that's also a, a kind of a, a metaphor. Basically, on the outside, he's a strong Iron Man. He's rich. He's a ladies' man. But deep inside, he's a broken man. His heart is literally broken. Well, there's shrapnel digging into it. <laughs> that's of why course. I said heart literally broken. Um, but, but anyways, going back to the time... I wanted to say, I just wanted to finish oh, my thought real quick. Sorry, go ahead. Um, when Robert Downey Jr. got the job to play Iron Man, he said, the one thing, I'm okay with being Iron Man, I'm okay with everything, let's do it all, just not the alcoholism. Because uh, 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 Robert Downey Jr. 
went to rehab for that stuff uh. about 10 years earlier. And he's like, don't put me back into this environment. I do not want to be a part of this. And they're like, okay, let's do everything else except making him a drunk. I thought they did make him, well, in the first movie, but he was like a recovering alcoholic. Not, it wasn't really that. In the second one, he gets drunk bad. And um, they do that in the second one. But it was in a way, it was in a comedic way sort of thing mm. to show character progression. And uh, that's why Robert Downey Jr. was okay with that. But he didn't want actual alcohol on set for that scene, well, though. I would hope not. I think most actors don't actually drink in drinking scenes. Have you heard of the movie's Grandma's Boy? <sighs> Adam Sandler. He, no. made, he made that, yeah. Uh, they actually, in the scene where the guy Dante is smoking weed, that actually is real weed that he's smoking. <sighs> We all love Adam Sandler, right? No! See, she loves him. <laughs> so, what was that about the Iron Man thing, right? Because oh, uh, he's, the, he's the exact opposite of Iron Man. And let's continue back to the story. Actually, I was going to talk about uh, the war that was going on. Iron Man was way of Stanley's way of um, descripting the Cold War that was going on. I thought it was Vietnam. That too. The Vietnam was the one that he was first involved in in the comics, and then the new one. But uh, later on, they go into um, that, and also what corporate America is. I mean, you understand about a lot of stuff that's co going on in Afghanistan. That's That was us giving weapons to people we thought could, could, could take care of it. We were trying to get other people to fight our uh, wars. I mean, there's a whole bunch of political stuff that I don't know too much about, but I know that... They were trying to, to develop this stuff in the comics. And uh, jump forward to the movie, when the first Iron Man came out, there was stuff going on like that. I mean, in the first episode, he realizes his technology is being used by terrorists. True, and that was a hard thing for him to, like, come to coax exactly. with. Exactly. And, and so, his first goal was, I'm going to go and destroy all the <laughs> ammo that they have. So... The time that was the what was going on back when the first movie was going on, that was what America was dealing with. And so Iron Man was a very good choice for Marvel's first start. Yeah. Uh, it was. But the thing was, back in 2008, if you would have went up to any or back in two, let's say 2007 right now, if you went up to anyone on the street and said, hey, do you know who Iron Man is? Their response would be... Oh, yeah, the... from the cartoon. Really? Yeah, there what? was a cartoon. When? Um, I don't know, but I remember watching it as a kid. But you would have been too young. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the guy from the Avengers, right? <laughs> it's more so to the point that people would have been... Like, it would have been someone who would have been like 10 or 12 wouldn't have known who Iron Man was. Yeah, if you went to someone who wasn't a comic book fan. Let, let's say right now... Someone who wasn't a superhero fan, and you went up and said, do you know... Or who? 12. <laughs> <sighs> if you went up to someone, said, who's Iron Man? They'd respond with, I don't know. He would have asked them... And then I'd have to hit that kid. <laughs> well, I'd sit him down that is understandable. <laughs> Say, okay, here's the Fantastic Four. And, and then slowly introduce him. And that's what happened with America, is they were introduced to Spider-Man, then the Fantastic Four was made. And these were all made by wrong studios. And by the way, we are not going to cover in the Marvel Minutes the Fantastic Four movie that Fox is destroying. That is nowhere going to be talked about by us whatsoever. We, we can't make poop sounds for that long. <sighs> that movie... Boycott it, please. It, it, it's pretty much you'd be hearing growling this <sighs> entire session. Getting back to the movie, let's go on with the second and third movie. You said that they did things wrong. Um, I don't know what everyone had their problem with with Iron Man Two. I, I well, don't. Well, you do have low expectations for Hollywood, for uh, superhero movies. I. The thing <laughs> is, I thought it was great. I don't know what most people had their problems with. Uh, that. Well, I I know... I know what they had their problem with with Iron Man 3. Okay. Everyone knows what the problem with that one is. So what was the problem? Are you okay with spoilers? I'm probably not going to watch it. Okay. Do you know who the Mandarin is? Like the orange? No, the villain of Iron Man. Do you know? Uh, no. no. Okay. Obviously not. He is this... I thought he was an orange. <laughs> No, he isn't actually. That's just a myth. Is he painted orange? That no. would be awesome. No, he's 
He's actually Does Mandarin. He squirt, uh, citrus into your eyes. That is his superpower. Yeah, no, gosh. He's this guy who's, uh, I, I believe it's, uh, Chinese. He's Mandarin. Is okay. what he is. And he gets the ten rings. He has these ten rings in each of them. Like Sonic. <laughs> no, in the way of their alien technology, or ancient technology, more so. Like Sonic. And it gives him powers. Like Sonic. No, it doesn't. The rings don't give Sonic powers, and I know that. <laughs> so shut up. <laughs> and he's Iron Man's, one of Iron Man's biggest villains in the comics. Wow, I and, didn't know Iron Man fought Sonic so much. And in the, in the movie, they built up the Mandarin as the big person. He's this all-powerful terrorist that goes around and just executes people without questioning. What the And in the comics, he's this all-powerful person with all these special powers that but... battles Iron Man on this level. But what Iron Man 3 decided to do was do a trickery, where the Mandarin was just an actor, just a pathetic. Pathetic British actor played by Ben Kingsley and he did he was not evil whatsoever he didn't even know evil acts were actually being caused from what he was being told to say um, and so the actual real villain was um, the person who was the founder of AIM and you do you know what AIM is in the comics no uh, advanced. Uh, by the way, I'm a DC person, so I know very little. Okay, so that's why people had their problem with Iron Man 3 is because it was a big letdown of who the villain was. Ah. Uh, um, I kind of wonder if maybe one of the problems that Iron Man has been having is it's, again, trying to be a superhero movie instead of just a good movie. I mean, when you watched Iron Man 1, you didn't think you were watching a superhero movie. You just thought you were watching a movie. True. You're right. Yeah, that it's, actually... It's... Is that what's going on? Yeah, that's the They're best They're trying way to too hard it. to be superhero or not. Um, so what are your hopes for Iron Man 4? Iron Man 4, real Mandarin. Because they've actually said that the Mand that, that person was not the real Mandarin. He was actually took the guy's name and it was using it in the wrong way. And this isn't a one-shot that Marvel made mm -hmm. about um, the Mandarin in prison. And they're like... Oh, by the way, the real Mandarin would like to have some words with you. And just, he gets broken out of prison, and, like, he's being, he gets grabbed by the neck and just thrown out of the prison. And then you're like, uh, okay, so who's the real Mandarin now? Mm -hmm. And that's who I'm thinking is going to be in this movie. Either that or Fing Fang Foom. <sighs> okay. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do. I don't really know. So why'd you sigh? That's a great thing. <laughs> they realize it's actually just a chicken. He was never in Secret Wars. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. It's... <laughs> no, what I want is yeah. Civil War, but that's a long shot to happen and the con for the movies to happen. But um, I don't that... know. There's always straight to video. Well, the thing is people would want it with the actors. Oh. They're playing them right now. And it wouldn't be that hard. The only problem is we would have to drop out uh, X-Men entirely because we can't get the rights from them. Uh, Fantastic Four can be alter-changed with different characters. And currently, Marvel is in talks with Spider-Man to get the rights for him for their movies also. See, it can be done. If there's money to be made, Hollywood can do it. Yeah. Um, the question is, is there enough money to be made by both companies to be able to pull the different superheroes together? That's that's the biggest problem, is how will they dif differentiate the money? Like, for Spider-Man being on scene this so much, like, this so many time, like, from, like, 13 minutes to maybe, let's say, half hour, he actually gets screen time. Then that means Sony gets paid how much per second of his screenshot of how much grossing would they get. That's yeah. the way that they would have to do. Um, but I think that's about it for the Marvel Minute. Um, let us know uh, your thoughts. Email us at speedforcepodcast at gmail.com. Hit us up on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash, sort, or slash uh, speedforcepodcast. Sorry, force of habit. My last podcast was sword. <laughs> um, I'm Phil. <laughs>
Oh, and I'm Margaret. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.